God of heaven. Amen. As we prostrate ourselves before your throne of grace this morning, we come asking that you put us in the right spirit. We come asking that you remove the shackles of fear. Remove the shackles of hatred. Remove the shackles of despair. Creating us a clean and a pure heart. Let your spirit dwell. Let it permeate in our lives so that our spirit will bear witness with your spirit and we all can be one in worshiping you in spirit and in truth. That's all right. That's all right. Dear God, we're grateful yeah. that we have this moment. We're grateful that you allowed us to still be on this time side of life. For those whom you have called, we ask that the comfort of your Holy Spirit be upon each family member. We ask that you be with Brother Stephen Young Jr. right now. Be with the doctors and the nurses that are attending to his case. Because we know you are the doctor of all doctors. Be with Brother Young and the entire Young family. We ask that you be with Sister Edwards. Be with her as she is sick, ongoing. We ask that you continue to touch her with your divine faith of love. Amen. Continue to give her the spirit of thanksgiving, yeah. even in the midst of her sickness. We thank you for delivering cares. We thank you for not allowing the surgery to go through. We thank you for your healing hand and bringing that little girl back to where she needs to be. Amen. We ask prayers for the entire Birdo family. Yeah. Father, right now we're asking prayers for this church. Yeah. We're asking that you remove the stumbling blocks that have caused us to be lethargic and complacent in our walk. Help us, dear God, to know that not only today we're in the Spirit, but let us be in the Spirit every day Amen. that you allow us to be alive. As we prepare to hear the message and bring the message, we ask for a recollection of the things that I have received. And may I impart these truths to not only a lost and a perishing world, but to those of the household of faith who, are, who have become stagnant in our walk. Help us, dear Lord, to glorify you this day. Help us to realize and understand the greatest blessing that we have is the breath of life. Yeah. Yeah. Help us, Father. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We, as people of God, <coughs> need to understand that there is a spirit that we possess. John, in the book of Revelation, lets us know what spirit we're supposed to be in. John was exiled to the Isle of Patmos for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. The question I have for you, have you been exiled to a secret place because of your Christian walk? We are persecuted on a day-to-day -day basis. But he not only is writing to the seven churches warning them, he was told 
by the Spirit to give this message which came from God, let the people know. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, yeah. the first and the last. Yeah. We need to know it's not that dollar bill that we have in our pocket. It's not that home that we have been blessed to obtain somewhere in this life that's the major back in our lives. It's not that master's degree or degrees that we have obtained that's going to be an important factor in our lives. It's not that fine car our cars that we drive. It's not these clothes that we cherish so dearly and that we think makes us different than the person whom we really are. But John said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Revelation is an unveiling or it's a disclosure. The whole book of Revelation is the revelation of the person and the prophetic program of Jesus Christ. What spirit are you in <coughs> today? Amen. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, according to the traditions of the apostles, John is the author of the book of Revelation. He was the only one of Jesus' original 12 who was killed, who was not killed for the faith. He also wrote the Gospel of John and the Epistle letters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. When he wrote Revelation, he was exiled on the island of Patmos for preaching the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Notice, he was in the spirit, it was on the Lord's day, and he heard a voice. Are you in the spirit today? Have you set aside all of your petty issues? Have you set aside all of the worldly things that seem to have distracted us as Christians? We need to understand that the early Christians gathered to worship and celebrate in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 20. We also need to understand we have members of the church who are supposed to have the spirit of Christ. But as I looked around this morning I noticed some of you weren't singing. It's going to come a day when you wish you could open your mouth. Amen. Some of you weren't smiling. It's going to come a day when you wish you could smile. Amen. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. We not only need to be in the spirit on the Lord's day, but we need to be in the spirit every day Amen. that God allows us to be on this the time side of life because he has blessed us to have these wonderful jobs. He has blessed us with these families. And I know sometimes our families can become dysfunctional. But when we look at it, we're all dysfunctional, but we're functional under the direction of God Almighty. He said, I was in the spirit on the last day. When we come to church, we need to be in the spirit. John was a lovable person, and he also had a conviction for the Lord. I spoke to you on last Sunday evening about are you convicted or are you converted? In Acts chapter 2, John lets us know that he was convicted and he was converted. We have people who go to ball games and all kinds of sports events, concerts, amen somebody, amen somebody, and they get so involved in them that they will put everything that God gave them into enjoying these events. But when it comes down to worshiping God, we have a tendency to become quiet when we enter the doors of the sanctuary. 
on any given day if you find one of us at a ball game we're screaming at, to the top of our lungs because nine times out of ten we have a family member who's a part of that sporting event and we want that person to know that we are encouraging them well when we come into the house of the lord god needs to know that we are encouraging one another we ought to be singing to the point to where the the, the, the walls will be vibrating Amen. from our singing. Amen. We need to be praising God to the point that the whole neighborhood will know that God is in this place. Amen. What spirit are you in this morning? We have different types of events that we put ourselves into. But John said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Is our spirit right today? Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse number 24, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Brothers and sisters, when we come together, our minds should be on what Christ did for us. How he came down to this very earth, rose himself in earthly flesh, and was led up of the spirit into the wilderness and was tempted by the devil. Have you been led up into the wilderness? By the spirit of the devil, yes you have this week. Sometimes you have been led up into the spirit of your wilderness wanderings. I don't know what you've been through this week, but I know what I've been through. And I'm so glad that God delivered me. So when it comes to the house of the Lord, I'm glad to see you. I don't know what you've been through, but I'm just so glad to see you. It's a shame when we get into the house of the Lord that we can't greet one another with a holy kiss. We can't greet one another with a smile. Everybody ought to be glad to see everybody because someone left this earth on last night and someone is leaving as I'm speaking now. But we harbor so much hatred in our hearts. Yet still, yet still we say we're Christians. Amen, somebody. Get for me Romans chapter 8, verse number 9. We need to let the Spirit of God dwell within our heart. John said he was in the Spirit. On the Lord's day, we need to know that our minds have to be transformed to the glory of God according to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We need to know that this indwelling spirit is something that God wants to see our lights shine on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of us are so filled with hatred until it Maybe that's the reason we can't smile because some of us feel like there's no reason for us to smile and what's so good about saying good morning? Well, you let me know now that you aren't even thankful that God allowed you to get up this morning. You didn't get up by yourself. If you think that alarm clock woke you up, you take that thing out to the cemetery and be there when it goes off at 6 o'clock in the morning and you see how many people will get up. There's not a soul that's going to get up all oh, one day. The trumpet is going to sound. He's going to put one foot on the quake and earth, earth on earth and one foot on the water. And everything is going to be still. And all dead is going to rise. The sea is going to give up its dead. That's been there a long time. Romans chapter 8. What does the Bible say? Start about verse number 8, if you will. Romans chapter 8. So, number 8. So then, they that are in us. So then they are in the flesh. So then they that are in the flesh. When you're all wrapped up in yourself, you can't please nobody but yourself. That's when you're always looking in the mirror. That's when you're always directing things at you. That's when it's always about you. That's when you don't have time for nobody else. That's when your spirit is all messed up. That's when you can't come and sing praises under God. Somebody say, well, Brother Norris, that you can't shout in the church Christ. I'm shouting right now because I'm so glad God's been good to me. I'm shouting right now because I know Brother Young's son came through surgery. I'm shouting right now because I'm glad when Brother Young was on his way to Fort Worth to see about his son, the man stopped him because he was disobeying the rule, but I'm glad God worked in the fact that he allowed him to go because his son was sick. Amen, Amen. somebody. Sometimes we have the spirit in some people that should be in us. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. Man wasn't a Christian, but he knew the man was trying to get the poor work to see about his son. Amen. A lot of times, do we rush to get in the church? Have you ever gotten stopped by the police? 
that's speeding and trying to get to the worst house? Amen, somebody. Because you're running late? Amen, somebody. Oh, it's 11 o'clock. I get there when I can. Amen, Brother Norris. But when it comes down to that job, you're going to be there. You're going to be speeding and you hope you don't get a ticket. Tell it. Woo. Tell it like you. Read, Brother Gary. Uh, I know this is some good preaching. Yeah. I mean, you know how to say, man. That's all right. Read, Brother Gary. But ye are not in the flesh. But ye are not in the flesh. But in the spirit. But ye are in the spirit. It so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. If so be that the spirit of God dwells. If so be that the spirit of God dwells. Let it take a residence. Let it look like some Jesus is living in your life. When we come through those doors, we ought to be glad to get into the house of the Lord. Everybody should be singing. Everybody should be praying. Everybody should be ready to commune. Everybody should be ready to fellowship with their brothers and sisters. But we harbor so much hatred during the week till we don't take the time to pray. Amen. And the reason we don't take the time to pray because the Spirit of God is not in us. John said, I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. He had been exiled for preaching the gospel. Have you been exiled for living like a Christian? Have you been fired from your job because you are a Christian? I don't think so. <coughs> they probably don't even know. <laughs> Amen, <laughs> Brother Nard. Yeah. Woo! Preach, Brother Nard. <laughs> Preach. We don't want to preach yet. If any man have not the spirit. Now, if any man have not the spirit. Christ. Of Christ. He is none of his. He is none of his. But we claim. But we claim. Let's give it a guy. But we claim. Then, verse number 16 of that same chapter. I'm already there, Brother Gary. I hit you out. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. There was a situation in the Bible where Jesus had to tell some folk, you are like your father, the devil. Maybe that's the reason. Some of our churches aren't where they need to be because our spirit is not bearing the spirit that God has instilled in us or that we received when we were baptized for the remission of our sins. Verse number 17 of Romans chapter 8, the Bible said that if children, then as of God and join as with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together when you are persecuted. But being a Christian, we need to thank God that I'm a part of my father. A lot of us don't want to be identified with the master until it comes down to us being together on Sunday morning. Amen, somebody. We want to be justified and we want to be sanctified on Sunday morning. But when we leave the house, what do our individual lives say? Can we be like John? Can we be on our Isle of Patmos? Sometimes it's good for us to just slip away and get away and have some time with God. We need to have moments when we <coughs> spend time with God in order for us to keep our spirit in line with God's spirit. Everything that has gone on this week, you hear all kind of comments and you hear this man who is supposed to be Leading the Hennessy. Lord help me, I need to get back to that. But that's all, that's all I have right now. I know God's going to give me. We need to, you got somebody that's leading the country, and this person is just as. Amen. 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 This person doesn't have the right spirit when it comes down to being a role model. And he wants to degrade the person that was before him. But my Bible still tells me that God puts people in place Amen. to take care of his people. Amen. We need to know and understand. God is the one that put in us the spirit of joy, put in us the spirit of happiness. It's funny how John is on this island and he's exiled for preaching the gospel, but he's still in the spirit and it's on the Lord's day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we all need to rejoice and be glad in it because we don't know if this is our last day. We may be as old as we're going to get, Brother Garrett. Amen, somebody. That includes these kids. We may be as old as we're going to get on yesterday. We celebrated my mother's 86th birthday and I pray to God of heaven everything that she has gone through with my dad. She still looks good to be 86 years old. I told her 
if hearing is the only thing that you bother with, you need not complain. Amen. Because God is still good. Yeah. We murmur and complain yeah. about everything. Yeah. We murmur and complain about, I got a toothache. Well, that's enough to keep me away from worship. But early Monday morning, my spirit is going to still have that toothache, but I'm still going to get to work. Yeah. I'm going to take horror jail all day long. Amen. When you don't realize you can take that same horror jail an hour or two before services and the same pain that subside on a Monday, God will subside the same pain on Sunday. Amen. Amen. We may make complain about everything. We may make complain about I don't have enough money when I get my paycheck. Well, that's your fault because you have the ability to study and get involved and do something else that can be pleasing to God. You were the one that didn't go to work every day this week for whatever reason. That's your fault that your money is short. You need to thank God for the money that you do have because a lot of people don't have what you have. You need to thank God for your spirit. Every church that I go to, it seems as if our spirit is lacking. Amen, somebody. Amen. It seems that if we, 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 we've, lost our, we, we've lost our zeal to worship God, yes. we have mm -hmm. zeal at ball game. Oh. Wait till, till the Cowboys start playing. Amen, oh, somebody. Yeah. 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 Anybody's house on a Sunday evening? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Furniture yeah. knocked over. <laughs> glass <laughs> or tilted. Why? Because everybody is shouting and rooting. For the Cowboys to win. We ought to be shouting and rooting, waiting on Jesus to come Amen. when they come and worshiping God in spirit and the truth because he's been so good to us. Yeah. Jesus was tempted by the devil and he had to answer the devil and that answer was it is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We need more Christians to stand up not only to the devil but to the word and say it is written. John was also one that loved the Lord because in Revelation chapter 1, verse number 2, he faithfully testified the word of God to everyone he came in contact with. Yeah. We need more of us to give a testimony about what Jesus has done in our lives. Yeah. What has Jesus done for you lately? He died for your sins. Yeah. What did Jesus do for you this week? He allowed you to go through some things and you're still here. Yeah. What did he do for you yesterday? He allowed you to get through your day and still yes. be surviving. What has he done for you today? You're alive and wow! That's yeah. enough for me to worship and praise him. Yeah. That's enough for me to give which has been given unto me. Give as I prophet and I need to give it cheerfully. I just need to just thank God for being who he is. Amen. We need to get out of this mentality that there is one who's holier than thou. Mm -hmm. All of us are holier than thou. Mm -hmm. If we are under the auspices and the grace of God, we all need God's grace and we all need God's mercy. We all need God's spirit. I know there are a lot of things going on. I'm unhappy with a, a lot of things. I'm having some problems with my own son, but thanks be to God, he's finally getting to see what God can do if you only trust in him, if you only be obedient to him. We want God that like this Burger King, have it our way when we're having trouble in our home. That's when we want God. When our children are acting up, that's when we want God. We need to know, want God in every situation and circumstance. What spirit are you in? We need more Christians to be faithful and testify. We need more of us to give a testimony. John had a love for the Lord because he saved us in our sins by the washing of his own blood. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 2. God really does love us because over in John chapter 3, Verse number 16, the Bible lets us know, for well, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Are we convicted? Do we love the gospel? Do we, as Christians, represent Christ every day of our lives? Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse number 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. What spirit are you in? 
did you come to worship today with anger? Jesus said in Matthew 5 and verses 21 and 22, anger is just as bad as murdering someone. Proverbs 12, verse 16 also tells us that it is the quick temper. But a wise person stays calm when insulted. Can you stay calm when you are insulted? Somebody was trying to test me this week. You always going through your day, you, you smile every time I see you. Every time I see you, you're always happy. Well, I'm happy because God allowed me to get through a situation. And I'm glad I'm not the person that I used to be. Amen, somebody. But I still have my faults. So we need to know as Christians, we need to always possess the Spirit of God. We need to always ask God to direct us in our steps. We must also know that we can't be quick-tempered. We must also apply James to our lives. We have to be slow to speak, quick to hear, and slow to get angry. It's all right to get angry. Just don't see. That means I need to pray and I need to solve this matter before bedtime comes because you may die and I may die. And that's a bad situation. When someone dies, and you're angry at that person. When that person dies, and they angry with you. So we remember the body. We need to always have a spirit of Christ, even in the midst of disagreements. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they agree? We need to all agree on God's word. We need to all agree that God is love. We need to all agree that Christ died for our sins. We need to all agree that he died for one church. We need to all agree that he's coming back for that one church. We need to all agree that we all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Is anybody holy? Is the preacher, is he more holy than you are because he's the preacher? What about the man that reads the communion? Is he more holier than anybody else? What about the man that prays? Is he more holier than the person that sits in the pew? We need to realize, oh, have seen it come short of the glory of God. And when we realize that, we'll have a better church. When we all realize that we're all dysfunctional, all of us are dysfunctional. Uh -huh. Have you ever had somebody in, well, you know, my family is dysfunctional. My family is dysfunctional too. You just happen to see the function of people. Amen. You happen to see the function of people. We're all dysfunctional spiritually. Amen. And that's when we need God. Amen. So we don't have a right to talk about nobody. Amen. Just because somebody doesn't have the mind of Christ, let's encourage them. Amen. Amen. We don't know what happened on their way here. All right, all right. Maybe their horses are the reason they're not singing. Everybody gets away at the same time. <laughs> Maybe that person is not giving because they don't have it to give. Right. Let's not judge them. Amen. How about let's just praying for them? Huh? Mm -hmm. she, she, she may be in despair because she tried over and over again to talk to her daughter about being pregnant. And this is the third time she's in the family way. It ain't no daddy. All right, all right. You got somebody in your family that's in the family way. Yeah. We just don't know about it. Right. You got a drug use in your family. Right. Amen. Right. You got somebody in prison. We all in prison because we got something locked in our minds that keep us from totally committing ourselves to God. That's the reason he allows his grace and mercy to be upon us. That's the reason he does. He's not willing that any of us should perish. We all are locked up spiritually. But we still need to have joy, even in the midst of, because he came down and he experienced the very same thing. But he was in the spirit in agreement with his father. When he gave up the ghost, he said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The next time somebody mistreats you, say, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Somebody cuts in front of you, don't stick up that same finger that they stick up. Okay. You put your hands together, hold your hands up and pray. You know what page I'm talking about? Hey Amen. I'm not talking about this right here. Oh, no. Yeah. You put your hands together and pray. Amen. Pray. You pray. If you have to stop, road rage. Huh? Yeah. In the moment of a road rage. In the moment of a job rage. Yeah. Somebody says something to you because they know you're supposed to have the mind and the spirit of Christ, but they say it anyway. Bring the have and the have nots in the church. Don't bring that in here. Yeah. This is not a place for loving you is wrong. If loving you is wrong, this is not a place for that. If loving you is right, is what we're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. Oh, Woo! I like this. John, in this 
spirit on the Lord's day. Psalm 118, verse 24. The Bible says, This is the Lord's doing. Oh, how marvelous it is to see. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We all ought to be in the spirit. Amen. Paul also tells us that our minds must be the mind of Christ. Philippians 2, verse number 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. John did what Jesus told him to do. The question I have for us, are we doing what Jesus tells us to do? Revelation 1, verse 11, he told him to write down what you see and send it to the seven churches. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. When he turned to see who he was, the, he saw the golden candlesticks, which were the seven churches and the seven stars were the seven angels of the church. Let's compare the church today to the seven to see where we are. In Re Revelation 2, verses 1 through 7, Laodicea, Ephesus, had become the loveliest church. Amen, somebody. Have we become the loveliest church, or are we still the loving church in the community? They were praised for patience and testing false prophets, perseverance, hating the deeds of the Nicolaitans. They were warned about leaving their first love. Amen. It's not talking about your first physical love. Amen, somebody. Because a lot of times you have to leave that first physical love because of some things that are going on. And sometimes those things pertain to your life. He's talking about leaving the first love, which is Jesus Christ. That's our first love. Amen, somebody. Smyrna chapter 2, verses 8 and 11. It was a persecuted church. They were praised for tribulation and poverty. They were warned about their faithfulness under persecution. And then we have... We have the Pergamos Church. Revelation 2, verse number 17. It was the compromising church. Praying for holding fast to Christ's name, not denying the faith. They were warned about false teaching having to do with immorality and adultery, holding to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Then there was the church in Thyatira. Revelation 2, verses 18 through 29. This was the corrupt church, but they were praised for love service, faith, patience, allowing Jezebel to teach and seduce to idolatry and immorality. Jezebel got up in that church and Jezebel tore up everything. Jezebel is in our churches today, amen. Jezebel not only come in the form of a woman either. Amen, somebody. Jezebel can come in the form of a man. Our character. Amen. After destroyed, Sardis, the dead church, but they were praised for a few faithful people. They were warned about deadness, even though they had a reputation for being alive. Then there was the church in Philadelphia, the faithful church. They were praised for a little strength and keeping Christ's word, not denying Christ's name, perseverance, but they were warned for holding fast what they had overcome during the tribulation. Then we had Laodicea, the lukewarm church, warned about being lukewarm, pretending to be spiritual, but they needed to repent. Now, amen, amen, amen. One pretended to be spiritual, but they needed to repent. Church, where is our spirit today? Is our spirit the spirit of joy, the spirit of love, the spirit of meekness, the spirit of joy, even in the midst of, uh, have you complimented someone this morning when you spoke to them? Did you tell them how nice they look and mean it? Did you tell them it was good to see them? I don't care if you just saw them yesterday. That's how short, how precious life is. James said our lives are vapor. That appeared for a short while. And then man says, Well, I greeted this sister this morning and I noticed she had these two girls and I had to compliment on them. See how this baby looking at me? See how look at those eyes. Look at the glow in that eye. See how 
how nice and peaceful. She knows that she's been taken care of. She's not worried about nothing. Amen. Church, we need not be worried. Yeah. He tells us don't worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He's going to take care of us. Yeah. Why do we worry so much? Why do we let Satan take our joy from us? We need to be, I know your husband, he's not acting right right now, but are you acting right? Don't put it all on him. But what are you doing? Are you being totally faithful? Did you, did you tell him oh, how good a week that he had? Did you thank him for working hard all that week? Or were you complaining just, just as much as, amen, somebody? <laughs> You always tired. Every time I look around, you nod off. The man working. The lights are on, groceries in the box, you got clothes wet, you run your fingers. He's working. Let him get some rest and then tell him, we're planning a day for just for you and I. So I want you to get your rest. Amen. Amen. <laughs> man, same thing. You may have a housewife. Man, that's work. Now, man, that's work. That's work. Doing everything they want to do, that's work. I'm trying to help, but I just get this. I, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm 35, 40 minutes. I'm done. <laughs> just running the bathroom, cleaning that. Oh, man, cleaning the bathroom. Wow! But I still have to do it. I got to have joy because this is a joint matrimony. I don't question her every move. Stop questioning everything. She, you you got to question him. Question for everything. Question yourself. Yeah, right. Where is your job? Where is your assurance in you? Yeah. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing to keep high, but don't be questioning where she's going. How long she's going to be gone? Where you been? It don't take that long. No! She probably just needed to get away from you. <laughs> from us. Sometimes they just have to get away. Sometimes they go home sometimes so long. I don't call, but then when the word is that, then when she comes up, hey, baby, how you doing? Then she comes up, yeah! You got to do that! I'm going through all of that hassle. God is the same way. He wants you to repent this morning. He wants you to repent of not having the joy that he gave you. He wants you to repent of not having the love that he gave you. I know it's hot, but it's not going to be near as hot if you don't confess. This is a place that's, that's, that's seven times hotter. What did them boys say? It's seven times hotter than it was before when they were in the fire furnace. I'm talking about a place with fire and brimstone that never goes out. I'm not talking about the charcoal stuff that you barbecue on and hours and hours, then it'll finally go out. No! The fire that will never ever go out. My soul is constantly being tormented in this pain for me not having joy. Even in the midst of trouble and trial. He died for me. Have you taken a special nail? There's a special nail for you? One but three? Where would you all these four, five, and six nails from? Wanting to re-crucify. When he hung his, dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders, he said, it's finished. His father was pleased. His father didn't turn away from him because he, he didn't love him. He turned away because he wanted him to complete the mission. A lot of times, God turns away from us in order for us to turn to complete the mission. <clears throat> Amen. We need to know what turning turning the cheek means. We need to know what having joy in the midst of having more month than money. Amen, somebody? Amen. We need to know that because life is but a vapor that appeared for a short while and it's gone. When I went and saw Brother Young's son after certain things, he had a smile on his face. Part of it was for, for, for glad that he was out of pain. The other part, part was uh, oh, just happened to be here in his condition. Amen. And here we are whole. Walking around complaining. I said, Stephen, how you doing? Right now, I, said, I feel better than I felt yesterday. Huh? Ask some of us, good morning. What's so good about it? Sure, it's good to see you this morning. Whatever. <laughs> In church! Amen. In the last house! Won't sing! Won't pray! Won't commune! 
Well, we'll give it in time for you. It's because of him that you exist, not you. You don't look that good. Tell him, bro. You're not that smart. It's because of him. And we get locked in me. Oh, this is me. If you knew who you were talking about, you are supposed to be a Christian. Slowly progressing, slowly maturing in the faith. He said, I want you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not grow in the grace of you. Amen. Amen. Not about you. If you think it's about you, you try to raise yourself up when you get sick. Amen. Why do you go to the doctor if it's about you? If it's about you, don't go to work tomorrow. Since you say it's about you, he died for you. Took on the sins of another man, spread the faith by another man. And we're stepped on every day and we want to fight. Our brother, talk about our sister. Because they are not what we think they should be. We're all what we need to be by the grace of God. Amen. We all need a spirit of joy. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of. No, I don't have no car, but I'm here. Amen. I don't have a new dress, a new pair of shoes, but I'm still here. Amen. I'm coming just as I am. Because I know who can live with me. Amen. You weren't there. Three o'clock in the morning when the tears started falling and it just wouldn't stop falling. Amen. You weren't there when I didn't know how I was going to give me some gas and all of a sudden the doorbell rang or the, the telephone rang or a knock on the door saying, here, I just thought I'd give this to you. Mm -hmm. Or oh, pay to the order of. Mm -hmm. You weren't there. My father's gone, my mother's dead, and nobody seemed to love me. You weren't there. All of a sudden I heard a voice. Yeah. I'll be with you. Church, we got to get to, we got to, get to where John was. Because on any day, we're all exiled on the Isle of Patmos. What spirit are you in this morning? If you have not been baptized, you need to step out here, commit your life to Jesus. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Because he's coming back. When he comes back, he's coming back for that church. That has not spot or wrinkle or any such thing. If you've been away, you need to come and say, look, I want to be reconciled back to the fold, and I want to rededicate my life to Christ, and I want to have joy that surpasses all understanding. I want to have joy even though I'm unhappy. I want to have that joy because I guarantee you, somebody else is in worse shape than you are. Amen. 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 I'm encouraged every day in the medical field. When I see sick patients, I'm going to pray for them. And I leave out of there crying and going on. You know why? Because I'm guilty. I'm guilty of getting wrapped up in cherry. Amen. It ain't all about me. No, you think I enjoy for the past? You getting in my car, coming down here preaching to, the, to you all? I mean, preaching to us, let me put it like that. There you go. We thank you, Tyler. You know how we are, so preach the door. <laughs> no, I do it because I love the Lord. Amen. Every week I get even happier. I get even happier. Because I realize now, I got more days behind me than I have in front of me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I don't, I don't play with God. Everything I do, I, I be like, Lord, it's my time, so I do right. Every time I start doing, oh, Lord, man, call me. Wouldn't it be sad to hear how Brother Norris died? Sin. I'm going to die. I'm going to die a sin. But I'm thankful to God. I hope I live to be a saint when I die. Because I would have asked for the forgiveness of my sin. And I'm always asking God, Lord, forgive me of this. Lord, please remove this. Lord, why did that thought come to my heart? Remove that from me. Give me some joy. Give me some joy. Young man, young, young people, school is getting ready to start. Be all you can be. If you're old enough to give your life to Christ, you need to do so this morning. You need to step out on faith and say, I want to be baptized for the remission of my sin. If you haven't had the joy that John had and that Paul had when they were in jail, you need to ask God to help you because this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I've never seen an armored car. 
I've seen people want to be buried with this and buried with that. And I know people can't wait till they put that casting around. They go back out there and get that stuff. I've seen people in the funeral home. You stand up close to the body. You, you wonder what they're doing trying to get the ring off. <laughs> You're nothing when you die. Show you how important you are. When you die, we can't wait to get you to the grave, y'all, so we can get back and eat fried chicken, <laughs> green beans, corn and ham, and drink the Kool Aid. We might say to you, hey, you know, you really know, she said, what? Wipe that tea, go ahead on. Go on about our business. That's how important you are. Since you're so important, you think you can't say praise to God, and you can't pray. And you think you can hold up the progress of the church? You just, this show you how important you are. What spirit are you in this morning? Pray God these words will help you. Come and together we stand and sing the same